Hello and welcome to this ultimate breeding guide on how to get the strongest pals in Pal World. Through breeding you can get the best traits and best stats on your pals to make them the most powerful they can be and I'm going over it in as simple a way to explain as possible. Other videos have done a great job on how to do this but they focus way too much on how it all works rather than simply showing you how to actually do it and just breed good pals and that's what we're going over. Let's take a look then and there are two parts to breeding which are passive traits and individual values. Traits or passive traits are abilities pals can learn randomly that can boost their attack, defense or work abilities. When caught these are randomly assigned to your pals but when breeding if the parents have the traits already they can have a chance of passing them on to their baby offspring which you hatch from eggs. That means you can breed two pals together until the baby has the traits you want. So here I breed a gamos with a fox parks until I get a baby offspring that has both rare and ferocious traits on them. I also have a chance to get a third trait on this one but that was the only two that I cared about. And then I bred two other pals together, one with legend like a jet Vergon, and one with muscle head like this fanglope until the offspring had both muscle head and legend on it. It can take a while to do this, sometimes you need to breed lots of eggs, but usually 30 minutes of breeding should get you a pal, at least one of them, with both of the traits that you need. Then you can simply breed these two pals together, the one with Ferocious and Rare, and the one with Muscle Head and Legend, until a pal is born with all four traits on them. And I have bred thousands of pals in the past week or so, and I find maybe 1 in 15 pals had all four traits on them, which isn't too bad. Now you have a pal with four traits, you can breed it with another pal and another until you get the pal you want. I bred my kit son, who I ended up with having all four traits on, with an Astagon to get a shadow beak with all four amazing traits on him. A quick note here on best practices for breeding pals. If you're breeding two pals together for traits or passive skills, always make sure your pals only know the traits you want. And I prefer to go with one pal that has all four of the passive skills on him and the other pal to have zero. The other option you can have is to breed a pal with two and another pal with two together. The worst option is for you to have two pals with all four traits on them. You would think that you would double your chances if both pals had all the traits, but for whatever reason it actually makes it a lot harder for those passive traits to pass on to the offspring. So one with two and the other with two, or one with all four and one with zero is your best option when you're breeding pals together. So now I have my shadow beak or whatever pal you're breeding, it's time to breed the best possible one with individual values. So in pal world, there are variations to all the individual stats that the pals you catch and breed are going to have. They're called individual values or IVs. There are four values that you're going to be changing between every single pal that you capture, an HP value, a melee attack or long range attack, and a defensive value. For melee attacks and long range attacks though, it doesn't really work out that way. It's usually only the long range attack that counts. So whatever your long range attack, your melee attack will also be when you're breeding. So there's really only three, health, long range attack, and defense. These values are absolutely invisible to the player, but there are many different calculators you can find online, which will tell you how to calculate these exact numbers, like palpedia.net, which is the one I've been using in previous videos. Every single one of these values could be as little as 0, but as much as 100. Then using this number between 1 and 100, the game will use a formula and translate that into a value of between 0 and 30% increase in attack, defense, and in health. So if you catch a pal with a hidden value of 100 in attack, the pal will have a 30% increase in attack. If you catch one with 0 in attack, then it will have a 0% increase in attack value. But those are extreme circumstances. But on average though, one of the stats is always a bit higher, so 70, 80, or 90, and the other two stats are usually lower at 20 or 30. That's on average. You can of course have all the stats at zero, which you can have the worst possible pal, or they could all be 100 and you can have the perfect most powerful pal, but it's extremely rare for that to happen. So a quick recap on that. Every pal you catch or breed is given a random hidden number between one and 100 called an individual value. And that number is used by the game to assign a boost to your attack, defense, or health, or all three. And the higher the number between 1 and 100, the better. The maximum increase you can get for your health, attack, and defense is 30%, but you can get anywhere between 1 and 30. And obviously the higher the number, the better it is, but of course the rarer it is to get. Alpha and Lucky Pals, however, do have a better chance of having higher individual values when breeding or catching them. 
So they do have an above average chance of being more powerful when you breed them, but regular pals can be just as strong. So when breeding, are IVs even passed on or are they random? Well, the answer is a bit of both. On average, you have a chance of getting the parent's individual values 30% of the time and 70% of the time it's really just random. But the good thing is that since you do get parent traits 30% of the time, once you get a pal with perfect traits, it becomes a lot quicker and easier to pass on those perfect traits to your offspring, as 30% of them, if their parents have perfect traits, will also have perfect traits, and you can pass those on to other pals. How do you know if your pal has good individual values then when you hatch them? Well, at level 1, your eggs can be a little difficult to tell apart, but by, say, level 7 or 8, they will have more distinct values. You can see here on Palpedia, a level 1 Shadow Beak with 30% increase in his attack will have a base attack stat of 111. I check the base value of every single egg I hatch to see if it's 111, and quite a lot of them are. If it is, I keep it and I level up a bit, and by level 7 or 8, you should be able to see the difference. And at level 8, with a perfect attack stat, you should have a base attack of 193. Mine here only has 189, and that means he only has a 25% increase in attack rather than 30 which is still good, but not the perfect score. You can either be happy with this, or you can keep breeding more pals until you do get that one that has 30%, but it can be very time consuming. Ultimately, the only option you have here is to breed your pals with the best IVs you have. Then as you get the better pals in eggs with the better individual values, you can swap them out with the parents you have. So at least the offspring you have will be that little bit stronger, but as far as getting the perfect pal with 30%, it really is just down to luck. And you're just going to have to wait until you get one which is given at random. And so far for me, I've never had a pal, despite having bred loads and loads of them, with more than 24% in attack. When it comes down to it though, the difference on 24% and 30% is very minimal anyway. Unless you plan to play ultra competitive PvP, it's not worth spending the hours breeding hundreds or thousands of eggs. And if you get a pal with over 20% increase from good IVs, plus all four traits, then I think that's good enough for most players, and it's certainly good enough to defeat all the bosses in-game and legendaries with ease. But guys, that is how breeding works. A lot of work, a lot of luck, and really, unless you're planning to fight players in PvP when it comes out, having traits will be enough really for most pals. And if you get some good individual values, then that's a bonus. But it's not something I would stress out too much about, because getting the ones with perfect values is down to randomness, and it could take a lot of time in order to get one with the perfect stats. Guys, if you find this guide useful, then give it a share, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.